Hi, second grade. Welcome back to Art with Miss Buchelt. Today we are going to get to add color to our great wave paintings. Now we learned about Hokuzai, who was a Japanese painter and printmaker. And we saw this painting or this print, excuse me, this print of his, that it looks like a painting, doesn't it? We are doing a painting, but his is a print. Um, remember how we saw that he used different kinds of woods that he would carve into and then they would put ink on it and they would stamp it? That's a print, right? So we um, drew out our waves, our great waves. We have our Mount Fuji in the background and we're gonna get to add color to this. We are gonna be using watercolor paints. Okay, so um, we anytime we use anything with water, we want to make sure that what we drew with is something that won't get moved around with water. Okay, so um, we used pencil first and then we did black crayon. So the black crayon is made of wax. And when something that has water in it, like our watercolor paints, touches something made of wax, it'll just move away from each other. So um, the wax is waterproof. That means water won't move it around. So that makes a great base for us to be able to add some watercolor paint into our paintings, into our great wave paintings. So um, what we're gonna start off here is we're gonna be using three different kinds of blues and then brown for our mountain. And then the sky is gonna be your choice. You're gonna do whatever you would like with your sky. So um, what I have is my watercolor paints. I have my water, my paintbrush, and some paper towels over here. The paper towels are good because um, you'll need to uh, dry off your brush if you are getting too much water on your brush or um, once you clean your brush, if you want to tap, tap, tap it dry, um, whatever you're gonna need that for, but it's always helpful to have a paper towel with you when you are painting. Okay, now when we are doing the blue into our waves, we are going to be doing it with stripes. Now, um, these stripes are going to, the colors are gonna kind of mix together a little bit, but that's gonna make a really cool look to our waves. So um, over on my paint tray here, um, I have a lot of different colors. Okay, so I have three different types of blues that are right here, and um, they look like this. So I have this kind of dark normal blue, I have this turquoise, and then I have a um, blue green, I'm gonna call that. Okay, so those are my three different kinds of blues. If you don't have three that are already made, what you can do is you can take your blue and you can mix it with other colors like green, like purple, like white, to try to find three different kinds of blues. Okay, um, otherwise, just go with what you have. It's okay if um, you need to mix a little bit of black in with your blue to kind of make it a dark blue, okay? Just as long as you have some different types of blues, that will be good. So I'm gonna set that to the side and I'm going to begin with, I don't know, I guess I'll just pick my regular blue here. Okay, and I'm going to be painting my first stripe in my big wave here. Now, um, if your brush starts to dry out as you're painting, remember um, to grab some water. That means your brush is thirsty. It needs some water. Okay, and that will help spread my um, paint a little bit further if I add just plain water to it. So I'm putting my brush into the water and then I'm kind of just moving that paint with it all the way to the edge. So there's my first stripe. Now you'll see I kind of dripped a little bit onto my background. That's what our paper towels are for. We can just tap, tap, and it picked it all up. Okay, next um, I'm gonna see about my turquoise. So I'm gonna go right next to this blue and you'll see that it's going to start to mix in. And if it doesn't mix in, that's fine too. Um, it just makes a nice soft edge um, between our colors, but then you can see that the colors are different and that makes it interesting to look at because water isn't just one um, type of blue, right? We always see lots of different kinds of blues. And then my third color, which is my blue green. Again, start up at the top and I'm gonna be just bringing those stripes all the way down and back up the tall part of my wave here. 
Okay, now uh, when you're doing this, you're not gonna want to leave any um, white showing in your water. Um, the only spot where we're gonna have white showing is in the top part of our waves. Now this top part of our waves is called a white cap. Okay, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But let's finish doing our stripes, making a pattern with the blues that you have. So you can see that I added my stripes of different blues in the bottom part of my waves. Now, one thing that I did a little bit differently um, in the foreground, remember we learned about the three different um, lines in a composition. So we have the foreground, middle ground, and background. Okay, so um, in my foreground, I made these stripes a little bit wider because when things are closer to you, they are bigger. And as they get further away, they get smaller. And so I made these stripes a little bit wider than these ones. Um, another tip is if you use too much water and you see that it's all moving together in a way that you don't like, what you can do is you can take your brush and you want to dry, dry, dry it. Make sure it's super dry. And what that um, brush is gonna become is a sponge. Okay, so for example, I have some extra water pooled up right here. If I take that dry brush and I just touch that water, it's gonna drink that water up and then I can just dry my paintbrush again. And you can do that as many times as you want, okay? Um, so tap where you don't want the water, clean, and then dry again, all right? So um, what I did also here in the background is I took a lot of water and I mixed it with my lightest blue. Okay, so I picked my lightest blue and I just added extra water to it and that made it have a light blue. Because as things move further away from us, they also get more dull in color. Okay, so dull means like if I were to take some water uh, not water, excuse me, if I were to take some white and kind of put like a white screen in front of it or if I were to add gray to it, um, that is what things look like when they're further away. So I made this water lighter because it is further away, it is behind these big waves. Okay, so now for the final touches of our waves, we're going to um, put some splashes inside of our white caps. Okay, on the edges. So white caps, if you've ever looked at um, a lake or an ocean as it has these big waves coming, or if there's a big boat that drives past you, it creates some waves. On the top of those waves, you'll notice that there is some white um, foam or some white water. It's moving super fast that it loses that blue tone um, because it can't reflect the sky, right? So it creates this white cap and so that's why we call it white caps so we want to mostly leave it um white on the top but around these zigzag edges remember when we do those zigzags we're going to be doing some tap tap taps with our brush okay so i'm going to again grab some water and i'm going to take that light blue that i used okay so the light blue that i used back here in my um back of the ocean there in the background and i'm going to put that onto my brush and then all along this edge, I'm just gonna tap my brush like this, okay? And you can let it tap all the way until like no more paint is coming off of it. Grab some more and keep tapping, okay? This is gonna kinda look like it has a rough texture to it. Okay, and I'm going to do that on this zigzag as well. Okay, so I'm kinda pressing down hard on my brush um, so that it creates that splash look to it or that rough texture to it. Um, now you don't want to ruin your brush too much here, but um, so don't do it super hard, but um, give it some good texture so that um, it looks like that wave is crashing over itself. All right, now we're gonna move into our background here. Okay, we're gonna grab some brown 
and we're going to paint the bottom, just the bottom part of our Mount Fuji brown. Okay, now we don't want to be too strong of a brown because remember we said as you move away, um, things get lighter and they get more gray. Okay, so don't make it a super dark brown. And if you accidentally did, you can just add a little bit of water to it. And we're gonna leave the top of our Mount Fuji white because there is snow on top of it. And just like I said in the background, you can choose however you want the sky to look. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint my sky right now. And there I have my final Hokusai Great Wave painting. Okay, if I move closer here, you can see some of those tap, tap, taps I did just around my zigzag lines to try to show a little bit of that rough water. And then in the background, I just said red, going into orange, into yellow. Now, um, I laid water on my paper first. If you do that first, just plain water in the background, then you just drop your color on there. It'll blend nice and smooth together. All right, so I hope you guys had fun getting to add color to yours and make sure that you show it to me on Seesaw or ask your parents nicely to send me an email because I'd love to see how your finished projects look. We'll see you later, second grade.